Hi everyone, welcome to Witty Twist Kitchen. Today I want to share my experiences of how to prepare tofu before cooking it, and six breathing techniques that you can also use easily in your kitchen to reduce unpleasant binning flavor, remove excess water, and improve the texture. These are universal methods for all different types of cuisine, no matter you want to bake, barbecue, deep fry, saute, or add it in your curry, soup, or dessert. There's also some awesome storage advice, so please watch until the end so you don't miss them out. The unpleasant bean flavor and smell of tofu, aka dou xing wei in Chinese, which usually turn people away from it, is partially from the soybean itself, but mostly from the grinding and the cooking process of making it. The tofu made from different factories with different techniques or equipments are usually quite different in both textures and flavors. Make sure to find the brand you like. For example, some Chinese really miss the old beanie flavor of it, so there are also tofu products available in China that are made with traditional craft ways, which can maintain the original beanie flavor as much as possible and cook it directly without any pre-treatment. So, what can we do to improve the tofu we've got already in our kitchen? Instead of pressing it, there are actually quite some efficient methods that the Chinese traditionally use. The first method is boiling. I usually use this method for soft, medium firm tofu or tofu sheets. I'm using medium firm tofu as an example today. First of all, cut the tofu into bite size straight away from the package. No need to dry it. When the water is boiling, add in the tofu and some salt. The salt can help us to achieve an even better result. You only need about 1 to 2% of salt, which is about 1 to 2 teaspoons of salt for 500 ml water. Then simmer it on low heat for about 1 to 2 minutes. Three things can be achieved by boiling. First, the excess water can be extracted out of the tofu so it won't dilute your sauce anymore when you cook it. Second, the tofu structure will be stronger so it won't fall apart as easily when you handle it. The third, some of the beany flavor compounds can be taken out from inside the tofu at the same time. If it's boiling too hot, you can add in a little bit of water to stop boiling to prevent your tofu breaking apart. Then I take the tofu out, set it aside. Look at the cloudy water. It also smells because of the unpleasant flavor from your tofu. Then it's ready for your cooking. If you cook curry, stew, soup, this type of dish, you can put them straight away in your pot. If you want to marinate it, please separate the little cubes apart and dry them to prevent them stick together. Then marinate them when they cool down to room temperature. You will feel your tofu a lot tougher to handle. Alternatively, we can simply soak the tofu in hot salty water instead of boiling it in a pot. This is the next method. You can use this method for lots of types of tofu from soft, firm, even pressed tofu or tofu sheets, etc. Cut the tofu into the size you want, put in a big mixing bowl, add in some salt, and pour boiling hot water into it, and set it aside for 10 minutes or until cooking it. This method is also widely used in Chinese cooking, for example, mapo tofu, stir fry or casseroles, etc. There's less work involved, but it takes a bit longer time. Still, if you want to marinate it for frying or baking, you need to take them out and dry them with a tea towel or paper towel. The third method is steaming. Since this method is a little bit more work involved, I usually use it for soft tofu or stew tofu, those types which are extremely delicate. I'm using soft tofu this time for demonstration. What I'm gonna do is place the tofu in a deep dish. It doesn't matter cut it or not. Steam it on boiling water for about 5 to 10 minutes or even longer if you want. Then take it out with the oven gloves. Drain the water, then it's ready for cooking. Look at the yellowish color of the water, it smells very beany too. So steaming is also a super powerful method for making tofu less crumbly and reducing the all flavor of it. Then you can just enjoy it with some sauce on the top or cook it in soup, stew or even dessert. The next method is microwave. Personally, I prefer using this method for firm tofu or extra firm tofu. No water needed, so it's the most ideal method for frying, pan frying, barbecuing, or baking. This is a firm style tofu. I just simply take it out of the package and wrap it up with two layers of paper towel. You want to wrap it up very well to prevent it getting really dehydrated when microwaving. Then place it in a bowl, cover it with another plate. Make sure the bowl is totally covered. So basically, we are still steaming the tofu in the microwave. Microwave it on full power for 2 minutes. Then take it out. 
Flip it over. Be careful, it's very hot. Microwave the other side for another two minutes. Then you can take it out, remove the paper towel, and cool it down. This method can also efficiently remove the excess water and improve the texture and flavor at the same time. You can still see some part of the corner getting dried, but overall, this method works so well. You can even drizzle some water on top of the paper towel before microwaving to prevent dehydration. And voila, this firm tofu is ready for cooking. The fifth method is freezing. This method can be used from soft to extra firm tofu. This is the medium firm tofu I left in the freezer a week ago. It's still as hard as a brick. After it's defrosted in the microwave, we can see lots of water in the bowl already without doing anything to it. Then remove the rest of the water inside the tofu by squeezing it between your hands. If you have a tofu press, feel free to use it. This is because the ice crystals will expand and create lots of cavities in your tofu when frozen. And the proteins have not just only been compressed, but also been denatured by the extreme low temperature. So the structure of tofu will be way stronger too. It's still amazingly intact even after I squeeze it so hard for a few times. The tofu now is super light and tough. The texture is rubbery and spongy, or some people consider it as a meaty texture, which also means it can absorb a huge amount of sauce or soup instantly. What I usually do is either cut it or just hand tear it, then throw it into my soup or stew type of dish, or marinate it with some yummy sauce, then fry it or bake it. My grandma and my mom used to freeze tofu a lot in winter by just simply leaving it outside the window overnight, then add it into case roll with vegetables the next day. They were like many little soup pockets, so satisfying when biting into it. In addition, when you cook or marinate your tofu, add in a tiny bit of cooking wine, any type you have in your pantry. Cooking wine is really widely used in Chinese cuisine to reduce all flavor from some food ingredients, so it works for tofu too. You can also heavily season your tofu with spices or sauces to cover the bingy flavor, if you really can't stand it. Another important tip I want to share with you is how I keep tofu fresh for longer time. I usually put it in a sealable container in clean water with 1-2% salt, then store it in the fridge. The salty water can inhibit the growth of bacteria for longer time than just soaking in water only. The other great way to keep your tofu even longer is freezing it. The tofu can last for 3 months in the freezer with no problem. I hope this video can help you to fall in love with cooking and eating those regular tofu products. If they work for you, please share these techniques with your family and friends, spread them on social media, let more people know that tofu is not a scary ingredient to cook with. Thanks for watching today's video. See you next time.